Today is Thursday, October 10th. We're talking about President Trump's demand before he'll cooperate with Democrats' investigation, the attack on an American ally, and a historic win in Alabama. Plus, a major power outage, Toys R Us has a new plan, and what's Uber Pet? Then hang out after the news for Thing to Note Thursday's bonus interview all about Hyperloop technology. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. President Trump now says, yes, he will cooperate with the impeachment inquiry, but only if he and Republicans get a fair shake. The Wall Street Journal reports one of Trump's demands is for the House of Representatives to take a vote about the inquiry. Right now, it's not really clear if a vote is actually required for the formal investigation. It kind of depends on who you ask. But it has typically been done in the past. Even some Democrats are split about whether a vote to launch the inquiry should have happened. The critics question if Trump will ever think the process is fair enough. Remember, just on Tuesday, the White House put out a firm statement that it will not cooperate with the impeachment inquiry, calling it unconstitutional. And already, the Trump administration stopped a key witness from testifying. At this point, it seems more of the public is getting on board with the idea of impeachment. A new Fox News poll found just more than half, 51 percent, of voters now want Trump impeached and removed from office. Fox News says that's the highest it's been so far. Also for the first time, former vice president and current presidential candidate Joe Biden is saying President Trump must be impeached. Though the New York Times reports he stopped short of saying Trump should be removed from office. Of course, Biden and his son are at the center of this whole thing. They're the ones President Trump wants other foreign governments to investigate for possible corruption. So what's next? House Democrats are expected to issue new subpoenas for witness testimony and written records as soon as today. And a key witness is expected to testify tomorrow. More to come. It's happening. A major U.S. ally is now under attack in Syria. This comes just days after President Trump pulled back U.S. troops in the area, basically clearing the way for this attack to happen. The AP reports Turkey has sent warplanes and troops across the border to attack Kurdish fighters in the northern part of Syria. And there are reports of panic among civilians in the area. Remember, this is the thing that had many lawmakers, including many Republicans, speaking out against Trump's decision. Why? The Kurds have been fighting ISIS alongside U.S. soldiers in Syria for years now. And by pulling back troops, some lawmakers say the U.S. is abandoning an ally, hurting American credibility, and in some ways, actually helping groups like ISIS. A member of U.S. Special Forces told Fox News, quote, I'm ashamed for the first time in my career. But President Trump continues to defend himself on this. The Washington Post reports he suggested the Kurds are not as good of a friend as many people think. And he also made it clear he does not support the Turkish attack. He called it a, quote, bad idea. But he says he pulled troops from the region so the U.S. is not involved in endless wars in the Middle East. Some sad news to tell you about out of Germany. ABC News reports two people were shot and killed outside of a synagogue during Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day in Judaism. The gunman reportedly live-streamed parts of the attack on Amazon's popular video gaming site, Twitch. The company says it's shocked and saddened and is working to take down all of the videos and suspend any accounts that post it. Reuters reports the video showed a young man sitting in a parked car and talking about his negative feelings towards Jews. He reportedly tried to shoot the doors of the synagogue open, but it didn't work, so that's when he fired shots outside. The gunman has now been arrested. New details are out about the allegation against former Today Show host Matt Lauer. Remember, he was fired from NBC two years ago for inappropriate sexual behavior. Well, now the same employee who filed that complaint says Lauer raped her. She says it happened in a hotel room in Russia during their coverage of the 2014 Olympics there. Variety reports Brooke Neville shared her story with the reporter whose investigations helped start the Me Too movement. And he's telling the story in a new book coming out next week. But Lauer fired back in a letter saying he'll no longer stay silent. He says the affair happened but was completely consensual and the start of an ongoing affair. He says she is now just looking to get paid. Neville's calls Lauer's defense classic victim shaming. All right. Well, for the first time in history, Montgomery, Alabama has a black mayor. The Wall Street Journal reports probate judge Stephen Reed is the first African-American mayor in the city's 200 year history. And that's a big deal. Montgomery is known for having a challenging racial history. It's where Rosa Parks held the bus boycotts and where Dr. Martin Luther King led the Selma to Montgomery marches. It's also home to the Voting Rights Act. 
Reed says the election is not about him, though. It's about the hopes and dreams of the city. An estimated 2 million people in California will be impacted by unprecedented power outages now underway. And some of these outages could last into next week. We mentioned this was happening yesterday, but now the San Francisco Chronicle reports the cost estimate of these outages to residents, schools and businesses is more than a billion dollars. Santa Clara County in the Bay Area also declared a state of emergency to have enough resources on hand. Many people who live in these areas and the politicians representing them are not happy about this, and they say these mass blackouts cannot become the norm. But this is all happening because of worries about wildfires. The power company, PG&E, says it's cutting off power in high-risk areas due to strong wind and dry conditions. So power lines and equipment can't spark new wildfires. That same company has been blamed for deadly fires in the past. All right, we have an update on the MLB playoffs. We now know it's the St. Louis Cardinals and the Washington Nationals playing each other in the National League Championship Series. The Cardinals beat the Braves 13-1 last night, and then the Nationals beat the Dodgers 7-3. As for the American League, we're waiting to see if the Tampa Bay Rays or Houston Astros wins tonight. Whoever does will be up against the New York Yankees in the American League Championship Series. Stay tuned. And in other sports news, gymnast superstar Simone Biles broke yet another record this week. NBC News reports she won her 21st medal at the World Gymnastic Championships after Team USA won their fifth straight world team title. Biles is just two medals shy of the all-time record of 23 set in the 90s, and she'll likely be getting closer soon. She's expected to win another medal at today's competition. Target wants to help save Toys R Us, at least online. CNET says ToysRUs.com will relaunch with videos and articles about toy trends and reviews. But then, if you want to buy something, the site will redirect you to Target.com. Target is partnering with the Toys R Us parent company to make this happen. Of course, this comes after Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy about two years ago, closing all of its stores. So, CNBC reports the new arrangement will allow the company to once again have an online presence. You might also see some smaller Toys R Us stores pop up in the U.S. again in time for the holidays. The parent company, True Kids Brand, wants the new smaller Toys R Us shops to be more experiential for kids, meaning they'll get to try out the toys before they buy them. Uber is testing out a new pet-friendly feature called, what else, Uber Pet. The Verge says riders can choose the feature before selecting a ride if their pet is coming along, but it will cost them extra, between $3 and $5 more. Before this, Uber asked customers to contact their Uber drivers before they were picked up, but a lot of people didn't do that, and Uber drivers complained, or just canceled the ride. So now drivers will get a heads up and can opt out if they don't want pets in their car. To be clear, this only applies to pets that are not service animals, because service animals are allowed in any car for free. The Uber pet feature will roll out next week and select cities first, including Nashville, Philadelphia, Tampa Bay, and Phoenix. And that's it for the main news today, but it's now time for Thing to Know Thursday, where a different expert explains a different thing to know only on Thursdays after the news. And this week, we're talking about the promise of the Hyperloop, technology that is essentially ground transportation that moves people in pods through vacuum tubes. Some believe it'll revolutionize the way we travel and even live. And the tech is in the works right now. My guest today is Craig Hodgetts. He has a patent for a type of tube for the Hyperloop, and he's a former UCLA professor of architecture who collaborated with his grad students and Hyperloop Transportation Technologies to produce a 300-page report on Hyperloops. So here's our conversation about the possible future of travel. Hi, Craig. Thanks so much for coming on The Newsworthy. Well, this is exciting to be here. It's an exciting uh, future that we're looking at. Yeah, so let's start with the basics. What is the Hyperloop? How do you like to describe it to people? Well, it is a little bit science fiction, and it is a little bit out there. But from an engineering point of view, it's it's extremely straightforward. Essentially, if you take a tube, you take all the air out of it, then you have reduced the the friction from the air and allow a vehicle inside of that tube to essentially move with no effort. And we've combined that with uh, an electric drive so that the Hyperloop uh, capsule, we're calling it a capsule, is a little bit like an executive aircraft. So you've got a very narrow, uh, long capsule with luxury seating in it. And that capsule is traveling through a tube, which is uh, airtight. And the speed at which it can travel then is, is, you know, 
is as fast as a supersonic jet plane. So we're talking about six or 700 miles per hour and getting from L.A. to San Francisco, for example, in what, 30 minutes? Roughly, uh, yeah, maybe 35 minutes. Um, and the idea there is that this will be a transformative kind of technology because unlike an aircraft where you need to load up the entire airplane, maintain people in a lobby prior to getting on the plane and so forth and so on, which consumes a great amount of time even before you're up in the air. The uh, Hyperloop idea is that these capsules only seat 20 people. And as such, they will depart with a great efficiency and, and quickly perhaps five minutes between. So it's like catching a bus on the fly and off you go. So it's a a just-in-time kind of transportation uh, technology. So time is clearly a possible benefit from this technology. What other potential benefits, such as zero emissions, which is a, a big difference than flying an airplane? Yeah, this is a really good question because the sustainability aspect has not been underscored. But the reality is, because of the evacuated tube and the electric propulsion system, the capsule basically coasts. If you imagine the way a sled coasts down an icy slope, once we've removed the air and propelled the thing with these electric pulses, it essentially coasts for many miles before you have to give it another pulse so that energy consumption is extremely low. And the aspect of pollution is non-existent. Creation of noise and other uh, environmental uh, issues like dust and dirt also are eliminated because it's inside of a tube. So this could be sailing overhead a herd of cattle in its tube at 600 miles an hour and the cattle would be unaware. It's really silent, smooth, and fast. Because it's so fast, what will it feel like for us, the travelers, inside these tubes going 700 miles per hour? (laughs) Well, I think you will be less conscious of the speed even than you are in in a jet airplane. It all sounds great. Of course, there are skeptics about the technology, the safety, the financial predictions. Are any of those concerns valid in your opinion? The predictions of of travel cost and of frequency of travel, et cetera, et cetera, are, I would imagine, are a little bit optimistic um, until, you know, number of people traveling establishes a kind of uh, steady state. The capital expenditure is vast. It's huge. Um, And so, like many other startups, it will take quite a while for it to pay itself back. But skepticism about the engineering, I think, are either um, ignorant of the realities or simply people who are afraid of new technologies. How could the Hyperloop change the way we ultimately live? Well, what would be really exciting, for instance, is let's just say I have a, a lunch date in San Francisco and I've got to be back here in Los Angeles for an afternoon uh, dinner date. And I could take off at 11 o'clock from here, get myself to San Francisco, have my lunch, and be back here by 3.30 or 4. And that will enable a kind of spontaneity and face-to-face, both from a business standpoint, and also think about it from a romantic point of view. And it could change even work commutes. Oh, absolutely. Reports say that that nine states so far in the U.S. are actively exploring this technology. What's the timeline for this to become a reality and then even mainstream? The fundraising and capital is the biggest question because somewhere there has to be a commitment to building the actual tube, which is the major cost, capital cost, and acquiring the property through which the tube will go. The efforts to build some test tracks, but there has been no real commitment to build a full-scale tube with all the uh, air evacuated, the magnetic drive, and all of the uh, associated technologies. Best guess for when we could see an actual commercialized Hyperloop in place? It would be a miracle if it happened in 10 years. 
And you can find a video to see what Hyperloops may look like in today's show notes. That's also where you'll find the sources and links to all the stories we talked about today. Just go to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and find today's date. Thank you so much for listening. The Newsworthy is here for you by four in the morning every weekday. So we'll chat again tomorrow. Have a great day. <laughs>